Hey everybody, we're back to it at the Red Barn. I really want to thank you for your input. Uh, it seems like you like the longer video, so we're going to do another long video this time. Uh, shifter cables, let's see if we can make this work. And uh, working on this trunk liner. All right, so here we go. Oh boy, version two going to work. Let's find out. We now have complete side-to-side -side action. Reverse, fifth and sixth. So this worked out great. All right, so here's what's going on, and this is my lesson learned takeaways from uh, this custom cable specking. What I didn't quite understand was that the, com the physical components, this is a little deceiving because this one's threaded much farther back in its collar than this one. Uh, but you can see that this component length is an inch longer than this component length. And since this inner rod travels an inch farther, this whole assembly is a completely different dimension than this assembly. And what was happening was the Ferrari cables were four inch travel. I spec it based on measurements and blah, 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 blah. But the long story short here is now that I understood, once I understood that this was a changing dimension, regardless of where you, you know, what length you spec the housing, it was a pretty simple matter of saying, oh, I need a three inch on the one end and a two inch on this shifter end. This actually works because I can make a turnbuckle in here for quick adjust. I can make a turnbuckle in here. And as I said before, these are just coupling nuts. So it's just to hook things up so I can play around. But uh, there it is. We have shifter cables. We have shifter cables. We have shifter cables. Yay. Awesome. So uh, now it's just adjustment time and we can sit in the car and make vroom vroom noises and shift the gated shifter. Very, very cool. Okay, I'm too excited to even worry about trying to tighten everything down. Check it out. It's all hooked up. It's not finally adjusted. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, reverse. We have shifter cables. We have adjustable shifter cables. They're adjustable here. They're gonna be adjustable here. They're adjustable at the back. What a major milestone with only one half a do-over on the cables. Oh, that's so cool. Oh my God, that is so cool. You think maybe now I should focus on getting it running? <laughs> anyway, I had made a big, big deal. I had made a deal out of the fact that uh, I was gonna abandon the tilting shifter. Well, check that out. It turns out that it works with the, the the problem was before that the cables were so short that it was cranked there was so much tension there i didn't think it was going to work it totally works and so this is actually in the highest position and it gets a little too tight to get it to come all the way into the fourth position what i call the fourth position farther away all the way back being one two three four so here it is in position three, but it's in position four here. So strictly speaking, it's not dead on with the steering wheel. I don't know if that matters. Um, and there's an element of style that I actually like. It's kind of like the same angle as the seat-ish. And so I, I don't know. Uh, you guys tell me what you think. Is that trying too hard? Give me a comment about that what you like better. Uh, let me show you what it looks like when I'm in the car. And you detail-oriented folks will notice that the <clears throat> I took the factory seat pad out of this and just stuck some towels down here. These seats sit higher than the, the uh, seats I have in the LS, the GTS Classics in the LS, and I like those a lot better. Um, so I'm trying to just get myself low here. But um, ergonomically, this is, you know, my hand is coming down and back so having this back a little bit is not horrible 
See, I can, I can convince myself this is perfect if I can't get it to go all the way forward. Um, you know, it's, what is that? Is that an inch and a half higher? But boy, I mean, that's like right there. I kind of like that from a where's the shift knob perspective. Now, the fasteners aren't uh, put onto the, that position of height, so I can't crank this thing down so it's too loose. To, you can see it's moving around, so apologies for that. But uh, I don't know. Tell me what you think. Does this, does this seem like I'm, I'm trying too hard? But boy, it's, it's super comfortable. And yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to leave this in here. I'm not going to take it out unless I have to uh, because of, I don't know, interference with whatever else I decide I might want to do. Uh, and I can play with it once the car gets running and determine what I like. I get, you know, other folks, I'll have other folks drive the car and see if they have a preference and uh, uh, try to keep it, you know, I got to deal with upholstery and whatever else has to move with it so it looks good if I go this way. Um, so yeah, other people will drive the car. What can I say? You guys want to come test drive it? You know? reach out to me and uh, come for a visit at the Rep Barn. What could be cooler? Uh, anyway, uh, super happy. Whoa, look at that. See what happens when the fasteners fall out? My wife is here and she's laughing at me. Oh that, my God. that supposed to happen? No. Okay. No. The best laid plans, as I've been saying lately. But uh, yeah, tilting, but only when I want it to tilt. Anyway, uh, good. Good, good, good. Happy with this. And uh, now back to uh, back to the trunk liner. All right, back to the trunk liner. Um, the main thing I'm trying to work through here is how this is gonna come out. I was toying with the idea of, you know, maybe cutting it like right here and, and welding this piece back in and leaving it there forever because how nice and easy would that be? But the more I looked at it, the more I realized that would just be sort of this dorky chunk hanging out in space, you know, whenever I took the rest of the liner out. So, uh, I needed to come up with a way that was going to make me happy for how this was going to fasten in. And what I did was... out for just a second and what I did was I put this flange in here and it's just clecoed in but it'll get welded here uh, if I can sneak you down behind it you can see that I can weld along that lower edge put some plug welds in there I can get seam sealer into here well the way it works is like this so what I did you can see I cut off the part that used to overlap and butt up against the back side of the suspension console. And then I trimmed off the little turn down and bent this piece up flat. So this surface will now seal against that flange. So if I put it back in, you can see what the deal is. This now sits in its normal state. You know, it sits exactly where it used to, where the factory sheet metal would have been. And this little flat section that I bent up now sits down against that flange, so I'll get a fastener here. And then in this corner, what I'll do is uh, I'll remake all the, you know, fix all these little slices and probably try to make an attractive end, an end piece, whatever you want to call it, where I can have a fastener here as well. And then I might put those other original pieces back in here or I'll just put a seal in there. That should be pretty straightforward. So this whole thing's going to come in and out, and I'm I'm happy with how this is going to work. I can, uh, you know, I can get a little rubber seal in there, etc. So that should be okay. And then, since this is going to come directly back like this, there'll be a flange, you know, a little tipped flange here that'll come all the way around the shock tower, um, and then you know it, the the piece that the piece of the liner that sits here will sit down on that. And speaking of that piece, what I was thinking of doing, and I'm just gonna kind of move you over this way for a second. What I had done, I cut this piece 
out of the, uh, the original sheet metal that came out of the car. And I was thinking, oh, I'll just make up a little, you know, I'll step it up like this and then blah de blah it'll, you know, be the same look and feel. And then I realized by the time you put this where it needs to be, which is approximately, you know, there, it's like, you know, not even a half an inch off of this deck. You know, because it's got to go backwards, and as you go backwards with an angle, you're moving it farther away from this surface. So, uh, rather than have just some little weird, unnecessary step up, what I've decided to do is... I'm going to make this piece... Well, first, I'm going to come from here to here with one piece of material and it's just going to come up kick up and do what it needs to do to provide this seal lip and then I'll just I'll have to make a little S bend in here but I'm going to do away with all these ribs because you can imagine if I had all these ribs and then they I needed to carry them back into you know this portion and then back down and into the bottom of the trunk it's it's not the greatest look um, so I'm going to go ahead and attach a piece of material here and I'll probably come up with a stamping or bead rolling design that I like. But this piece of material is going to go from here to here and it's just going to be an all new remake. Because remember this from here down is going anyway. And I think that if you want to call it big news, it's just not really, it's just news, is um, I'm not going to make this out of steel or aluminum and keep it steel or aluminum. I'm going to make a buck. Uh, and then pull a mold off of it and then make this out of either fiberglass or carbon fiber so it weighs nothing and um, that way I'm not trying to you know weld and worry about distortion I can I can put stuff on here I can you know I could bond metal onto this and body work it I can use popsicle sticks and hot glue and none of that matters because I'm going to be making it it'll just be a plug for a mold so that is the next set of steps uh, to go ahead and start working up, you know, all the details of how this is going to be shaped, what I'm going to do for around the air oil separator, how this step out's going to work, you know, how the hump's going to work, all that good stuff. So uh, I'm going to get going on that. Okay, I want to try something here from a design perspective. These two oil breather lines come out at a lovely V angle and this thing's pretty close to the bottom of the trunk or the targa roof when it's stored so i'm toying with the idea of making the trunk liner sort of accent this thing so it'll be completely visible so this is not the piece i'd use this is just helping me mock some stuff up but this would sit you know this would maybe sit like this but then to pick up that v shape i just bent up a little a little rod just to kind of give me an idea. And imagine if that was clear plex and then this was a wall that came down and then this came back. So there'd be a little tower. It'd be higher than this. It'd be up about, maybe about there. So I'm going to try to mock something up using a bit beefier steel rod. But first I got to bend it. And so this is one of the bending dies from the hydraulic bender that looks about like a radius that might work. And I'm just using one of these pins to put it down here on the, on the table. And then I've cut a length of quarter inch steel rod and marked a center line. I might have to tack that down. And then with this here, I'm just going to see if I can work this around the die and see if this works at all. But look at that. So it's a nice radius. Now let's go see if that, you know, I, I haven't, I got to figure out the right angle here. So this will give you the idea. Gotta get bent a little bit more. But then this would be, and it's high, but this would be the 
the basic shape. Be about, uh, about like that. And it'll still fit under the roof. And I think that might be kind of cool looking. And even if it doesn't get plex, this shape is kind of neat. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with this for a little bit and see if I like it. And a little bit of cutting later. And I've sectioned out the middle section of the old original sheet metal and fixtured it in, you know, just made sure I got it at the same height and then just uh, spacered it back. And you can see plenty of clearance now everywhere, mostly here where the interference was before. And now it's a matter of fitting the top. Let's see how that works. And if I exaggerate it, push this all the, all, the, all the way in, which it won't be that far in. But now you can see I got room for my seal and I got clearance. So yay, that worked out great. Now all I got all I got to do is tie this in here with something a seal can do. So I'll make a little S channel or some such thing. But now I know that I've got that dimension which will work for the shape. And there it is all completely put together with the latest greatest. It's really you can't see anything at this point, but the roof is stored. The top is on. It's not on its hinges, which uh, is actually okay because this is going to, you know, this is sitting down too low right now anyway, but uh, it fits. Now this that you're seeing here, this is the cutoff original seal channel. I don't know if you can see it, but this is just a hack piece that I cut out. If you remember for the, from the earlier episode, I had that one by going across there to keep the structure. Well, I couldn't put it back on the car with the roof in there with that in there. So I cut that out and kind of hacked back in a part of the piece I'd cut out just to try to help it keep its shape so that I could put it together. And now I can, I don't know if you can see, maybe I can sneak you down here. I don't know if that's gonna show anything, but you can see where the trunk is gonna have to change shape and where it's gonna have to hit that seal and everything clears. So. Now the fun begins of trying to actually get this thing shaped and get, you know, get the, this front wall figured out. It's not going to be this lid. I'll probably mock it up on this lid just to prove out the design. Um, but there it is in place. So now it's a matter of determining what I go after next. I think I need to stabilize this piece. So I think it needs to be figure out this S bend. The other thing that's going to happen here is, if it wasn't clear, I was watching uh, part of the video back and I don't think it was clear. This will be S-bended on to here for the seal. And then I'm going to cut it probably just at the tip of where these uh, ribs used to be. And that will step out and be the ledge for if I decide to do a piece of plex in here. And remember, if this is clear, you're going to be looking down at the whole back of the motor, right? So, you know, yes, this will be here, but there'll be a window, you know, in this whole area. And then this will drop down. So still some things to work out. Okay, on to stabilizing this thing. I keep saying I'm going to do an S-bend in here. I'm going to, I want to use a factory seal. So I think rather than, let's not call it an S-bend, let's say connect here to here. Because I'm just going to come to some logical point here and tie it into some logical point here just to buy myself the simplest, you know, I just have two little welds. I'm not trying to bend something. I'm not worried about making the seal do something really crazy in terms of trying to go around a corner. It can't go around, although it can go around the corners here. So, but if you look at this, you know, by the time I get halfway here and halfway there, I don't think it's worth trying. I think it, I can make it look good or look good enough. And remember the underside of the trunk is you know is is wide enough to deal with this so not the underside of the trunk the component of the trunk that hits the seal and so i will just make this you can tell how confident i am i'm still thinking about it while i'm saying this is what i'm going to do 
But something like this is what's going to happen. And I'll verify that the trunk, you know, the seal will actually seal. Uh, and then just splice this piece in here. And like I said, since this is just going to be a plug for a mold, it none of this, you know, it doesn't really matter what it looks like. I can make it look pretty. And uh, when we pull the mold off of it, it'll be, it'll be super cool. All right, and here's the result of all that. I just knocked this part, sliced this part out, so I could just bend this forward. And of course, since it's being bent on two different angles, it's bending up. So I'm going to need to uh, relief cut it a little bit and bend it down just a bit. This isn't bolted down, but you can see what I'm trying to do. I'll bend that back into position and then just kind of slice into both of these pieces at once. And then that's where it'll get welded together. And that'll be the new shape. Same thing on this side. So a little bit more to do. Maybe I got to just stretch that a little bit. So I'm just going to keep at it. So I just stretched that a little bit, as you saw, and that brought it down in, in line with where this is, All right? So now this is essentially lined up. It's this nuts in the way, but now what I'm going to do is pick a point in space and just run the zip wheel in here and in here. And then this will attach to this and that'll be my step out. So let's see how that goes. And there's the final of it. So this now comes out to here. And I'll do a final check. But the nice thing about that is I didn't have to like splice and cut a piece. I just weld this back, get this welded, and it's connected. And yes, I've got to deal with all this other area, but that's a known issue. And then same thing over here. So let's go test it on the roof. You can see absolute worst case, right, with the roof shoved all the way forward, which it's never going to be. It just contacts this. All right. I think we should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and tack that in place. And we are one step closer. One final quick check test in the car. And here you can see how that's going to work. All right, so that's the seal path. Once that's all tidied up, and I can I can probably you know roundy round that just a tick so it's not quite a super sharp edge or super sharp change of direction. But there's my step out. Okay, a uh, little welding just to tie everything together. I got a, a little bit more touch up to do. I just want to kind of get it in in position here, but at least you can see what the goal was, and there's the goal. Clearance for the manifold and the plenum. You know, obviously a bunch of work to do, but it's stabilized. It didn't change dimensions. And now all I gotta do is let's chuck the roof in and see how that looks. And here it is in. Roof's position. Little rubber guys at the back are all stood up where they need to be. We aren't pushed all the way in. We've got clearance for the seal all the way along the front the front of the Target roof, and uh, I, I tried to soften this a little bit, and I think it's going to work just fine. That seal's, you know, the seal can go around this corner, so it'll have no trouble traversing that little shift on both sides. And uh, I'm really happy with how that turned out. Obviously, I still got to connect everything and do some final trimming, but uh, really happy with how that turned out. Uh, it it looks good, and functionally, it's right where it needs to be. So yay! So I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, comments and questions subscribe if you haven't and all that good stuff oh and before i forget let me know what you think flat tilted i don't know there it is flat i just can't make up my mind what can i say anyway y'all take care we'll talk to you again real soon bye bye